morning. I want to welcome you to worship with us here at Mount Calvary Lutheran Church in Detroit. Well, not really at Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. Uh, we are again worshiping electronically uh, from my uh, home uh, here in another corner of the house uh, as we celebrate the, the Easter morning victory of the resurrection here on April 12th of 2020 as we're all in lockdown for our the COVID virus epidemic. We still need the opportunity to gather as God's people. We do that this morning electronically as we celebrate the victory of the resurrections. We gather together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather together, we remember uh, the first folks to discover uh, the resurrection, the women who came to the tomb early Easter morning. We hear John's account from chapter 20, beginning of the first verse. The apostle writes, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran away and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and he went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciples, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and, saw, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. So Mary is the first to lay eyes on our risen Lord, discovering that Jesus Christ truly has risen. Now, 2,000 years after Mary met Jesus outside her tomb, outside his tomb, as God's people we still proclaim, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We join in seeing the day of resurrection as we continue our celebration of the victory of our risen Lord this Easter morning. Now 
call to worship on this Easter morning Mary's tears of sadness turn to tears of joy on this Easter morning our tears of sadness over sins we cannot forget now turn to tears of joy because we are forgiven on this Easter morning our tears of sadness shed for those faithful who have died turn to tears of joy because we know they have a share in our Lord's resurrection on this Easter morning, the tears of sadness shed over pains and illnesses now turn to tears of joy because Christ has the power to heal our bodies and our souls. On this Easter morning, our tears of sadness over worry and doubt and the anxiety they breed now turn to tears of joy because we are certain and sure that God's promises have come to pass. On this Easter morning, the tears of sadness generated by our fear of what the future may hold now turn to tears of joy because we know that God holds our future and that our future is in heaven where Christ will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. As God's people gathering together, we come before him remembering that we are yet a sinful people and we seek his gift of grace as we come to him in confession uh, seeking his absolution we come before God almighty and all merciful God we are dead in trespasses and sin we have no power to rise we have offended your majesty and defied your divinity we have brought death and darkness where you once said let there be light we deserve the doom that you have decreed we are dead and trespasses and sin, we have no power to rise. But Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Since we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. For his sake, we implore you, Heavenly Father, forgive our sins and assure us of the truth of your precious promises. Let us be raised with Christ. Thus it is written that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins must be proclaimed in his name. That word is now proclaimed to you. You are forgiven. You are a victorious Lord. For Christ has risen. We have seen the Lord. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. We join in singing the hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today.
of your home from different directions into the same room. They see things a little differently from the perspective uh, uh, from which they're looking. And so it is, as we read the various gospel accounts, we, we see the same scenes in the life of our Lord depicted, but oftentimes from a little different perspective. And so as we uh, have heard the, uh, the view of Jesus in the, the initial response of the women and and his disciples to Jesus' resurrection uh, from the Gospel of John. Now we hear Matthew's account of what he saw looking through his window uh, on that first Easter, Easter morning. We read the first 10 verses of Matthew 28. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone back and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the, guard, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. The gospel for uh, this Easter season reminds us to keep our eyes lifted up. In Colossians, uh, St. Paul directs us to look up, lift our eyes up to heaven, to Jesus. He writes to the group, to the church at Colossae in chapter 3, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, which Christ is, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, where Christ, when Christ who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Keep your mind, your heart, and your eyes looking up. Be lifted up. It's one of the things I learned uh, playing baseball as a, as, as a kid. 
wasn't a great baseball player, so they stuck me out in the outfield. I remember that uh, uh, we had to keep our eyes in the game, even out there where, where a, uh, a ball rarely came. Finally, one did come, and I saw it coming down out of the sky uh, because I had my eyes in the right direction, and I actually caught it. I was a bit relieved. Been so long, I wasn't sure what to do with it. One of the other guys who caught it, they're used to hitting into their fields more commonly. Uh, they played a little shallower than I did. Uh, they might have gotten into the infield a little quicker. Uh, you got to know what to do. But but they all stayed out of the way and let me catch it. Just like when it came to their direction, I would let them catch it and I'd stay out of their way because we had good communication. Good communication is important when you're playing baseball. That's why you see ball guys, men running into each other sometimes in the outfield. They aren't communicating. Either they're, they're not speaking or they're not listening. You got to watch the ball with your eyes up. And when it comes to you, you got to let everybody know. And when it comes to somebody else, you got to listen. Even though you want to get in there and you want to help, you need to listen. And sometimes the most help you can be is to stay out of the way and let somebody else handle it. The news from the resurrection this morning for us is that God's got it handled. His eyes on the ball. He's got it. Stay back. Let him handle it. When we try to run in and take control of things ourselves, we cause nothing but problems. I watched a uh, news uh, report the other night of a woman who was talking about all the struggles getting unemployment, and, and she was frustrated and upset with her bosses because they weren't giving her all the answers she wanted, and she felt they're holding back on her. So listening to her questions, it seemed to me most likely they just didn't know. They couldn't tell her uh, what they didn't know. Uh, but she wanted to get her hands on things and get in there and take control. And sometimes you just got to step back and not acknowledge that we don't have control. Uh, and, and when we do that, and when we acknowledge who really ultimately does have control, we realize that God's got the ball in his hands, that God can handle it. Uh, our anxieties are... A relief. We're in a very anxious situation right now. A lot of stuff people are upset and distressed about. Uh, there, there are people worried about life itself. If I get this disease, will I survive? Especially, especially uh, if you're you know, my age and older, we're worried about what happens if, uh, if, if, if it hits us. And, and if you add to that some of the complicating issues people have got, it doesn't matter your age. Uh, it's, it's a fearful time. Fear for life itself. Uh, a lot of younger people aren't so much concerned about that. They're in good health, and they anticipate that if they get it, that, that they'll be fine. Uh, and, but they're distressed about other things. Uh, they might be worried about loved ones. I hope they're thinking about family and friends and other people they know who, who, who might get it from them if they get out and, and, and take care of things. But, but oftentimes they're so overwhelmed, I think, by just a fear of where rent's going to come from and where house payments are going to come from, how we're going to pay the gas bill and the water bill and the grocery bill and all those things that, that, that it's, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And I understand that. And all those things aren't just, going to, aren't just going to go away. And there's going to be struggles for some people probably for, for quite some time as a result of, of this. And, and some, maybe some of our own will even lose their lives in this epidemic. But we remember the words of Jesus in uh, the Sermon on the Mount when he talks about uh, the birds and, and the sparrows that God has them in his hand. He talks about the grass, the lilies of the field, withers tomorrow and it's gone. It only lasts a day or two and it's over. And yet God clothes them so beautifully and he assures us that he'll take care of us. God's taking care of us. He says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the rest of this is all going to be added to you. Keep your eyes up above uh, on God's kingdom. Seek him and his righteousness. And, and it's good to know as you try seeking the righteousness of God, try to do the right things. It's good to remember, too, what this Easter morning is all about. Those folks coming to the tomb came in deep sorrow and sadness because they had not yet discovered 
uh, the victory of Easter morning. They're caught up in Good Friday and what lay behind. Uh, in that experience when Jesus died on the cross, and it's good for us to remember Good Friday. Remember we said the other night that the good in Good Friday is that God makes you and me good uh, by his grace through his forgiveness in Christ Jesus. That's the righteousness. His righteousness is already, already ours in Jesus. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. Seek first heaven and, and, his, and, and his righteousness. And all this stuff is going to be added to you. Seek Jesus and trust in him. And listen, listen to him because he's telling you, uh, he's got this handled. The message of Easter morning is that God's got this handled. We'll come out of this and everything will be a little better again. I don't feel it'll be the same, but it'll be better again. You know, baseball will come back again someday and we'll be able to listen to it on the radio or watch it on the screen. And, and hopefully we'll have the perspective to realize uh, that as fun as it is to watch the game and as great a diversion as it is or whatever choice of... Uh, game or or shows you like or whatever you prefer to do that those diversions they're okay uh they're okay because we know that god has life in his hands and we do our best with it and seek to get along and seek to do what needs to be done but always with our eye on what lies before us as i said some are even going to lose uh, their lives or the lives of loved ones in this in this epidemic but the good news to us this morning uh, is that there is yet victory in life even then. Uh, St. Paul tells us in, in 1 Thessalonians that uh, we grieve not as those who have no hope. So those of you this morning who've lost loved ones uh, over this last year or two or three or however long it may have been, uh, you have that hope and that joy to celebrate this morning that those who knew Jesus have gone home to him. And you see him again. It's okay. The loss is real. The sadness is real. Just as it was real for those women making their way to the tomb that Easter Sunday morning. But so is the joy. The joy and the rejoicing that is ours in the resurrection. Just listening to God. He's got this. He'll take care of you. And keep your eyes on him. Your mind and your heart focused on heaven. And what lies ahead, because what lies ahead for us as God's children is far greater than anything we have to leave behind when we join him there in those rooms in that place he's prepared for us. So celebrate today. Can't get together with family and all the things you normally do. And uh, a lot of stuff that's just not available. If you want to go out to dinner, you can do carry out, but you can't go eat in. Uh, you can prepare the big meal, but you're going to have to eat it in a smaller group, and all those things. But all those things, uh, all those things as important as they are, pale in comparison to the reality that we celebrate this day, that God's got things in his hands. God has your life in his hands, and God delivers to you the victory of the resurrection. And there's always tomorrow for God's children. There's always tomorrow with Jesus. So celebrate today, the day of victory, in the name of Jesus, amen. Our victory comes to us through faith in Jesus, God the Son. We remember that God is really one God, but he comes to us in the three persons. Uh, Jesus, we celebrate this day in the resurrection, and even as we do, we confess our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all three in one, three persons in one God. Three words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, our gracious Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, 
You have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray for the welfare of our community, for our world, and for one another. Father, it's a difficult time for us as we struggle with the realities of uh, the disease that has gripped our nation and our world. Many are asking economic questions, uh, not so much about the grand scale of the economy in our world, but in their own lives uh, as they wonder how we will meet the, our, the needs of our families and and, and how we respond to the expectations of those around us and make the payments we need to make. Father, reassure us that those things are in your hands, that you will provide a way forward for us. Even as you provide a way forward uh, for us through Jesus, your son, as you open the gates of righteousness through his forgiving love and welcome us to your kingdom in in his name and may that be our greatest focus the assurance that you are with us and we will one day be with you and may that image bring peace and comfort to those who are losing loved ones uh, uh, whether they're uh, lost to the epidemic or other causes that yet touch our lives bring them comfort and, and peace even joy in the assurance and promise of the resurrection where you wipe the last tear from the eyes of each of your children as we gather in your kingdom and father bring comfort and assurance to those who are struggling with this disease and other infirmities that you're with them watch over them and care for them guide those who attend to them keep physicians and nurses and custodial crews and all those people working in our hospitals safe from harm and and danger watch over and and protect them and give them success in their efforts that those they, they care for may survive to attend again to the needs of their other family and friends and the loved ones who surround them. Be with our city of Detroit. It's a difficult time in our city, Lord, uh, but we know that you are here with us. Watch over and protect us. Uh, keep people safe. And, 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 and Father, bring us together uh, in this time, in hearts and minds, even though we can't be together physically, help us to learn to love and appreciate one another and bring an end to all the hatreds and violence and racism and things that divide us and bring us together in joy as we, as we celebrate that we have one God and Father and that you have delivered us through Jesus, your Son, delivering to us the promise of forgiveness for our sins and the gracious gift of life eternal. So we come to you in the most precious name of Jesus, um, in whose name we pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus, then, we come to you with the prayer given us by our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now we share with you the benediction, the farewell, if you will, uh, of our Lord in the these words of promise and hope we have to share with you, these Easter words of victory and life. Now may our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless you and keep you in his grace and peace, both now and forever. Amen. We join in singing, Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia.
Christians on this world. 